Today I'm going to share with you three simple steps to remove fences in Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is to simply paint over the fence. So let's click on the brand new layer icon right there. Just click on that. So this is our new layer. Let's name this fence mask. All right, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just randomly naming it. Now let's zoom in on the fence. Take the brush tool right there and you can go ahead and select the hard round brush. All we have to do is to zoom into the fence, make the brush just a little larger than the fence. Just dab once on one end. All right, then hold the shift key and dab on the other end. See? A straight line is created. You can hold the shift key further and just continue here. Just keep holding the shift key and continue here. That's how we will continue on one line and similarly all the other lines. Now some of you might be thinking why not just do this? Let me just turn this off for a moment and this is just for demonstration. Some of you might be thinking and I was thinking the same and I was thinking probably what I can do is maybe I can make a cross something like this, something like a cross, okay? And then just simply create a pattern out of this. Maybe select the move tool, hold the alt key or the option key and then create a pattern and just keep doing that. Well. As you can see, with the very first copy, it is not aligned at all. My friend, welcome to the real world. And in the real world, most things are not aligned, symmetrical or perfectly lined up. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and delete all of this and come back to fence mask. We have to do this manually. Let's turn this on and let's continue with our quest. So I'm going to take the brush and we will speed this up for you. Just remember dab hold the shift key and then dab on the other side just that keep holding the shift key dab keep holding the shift key dab release the shift key hold the space bar the hand shows up just move and then release the space bar hold the shift key again and dab see how we are doing this you will get the hang of it just make sure all of the fence is covered don't worry about this part. This part will be covered later. Now this is why it is essential to do this manually. Have a look. The thickness changed a little bit right down here because this area was not focused by the camera. So keep that in mind. It's always best to do this manually. If everything is perfectly aligned, which rarely happens in the real world, you can go ahead and create a pattern. But in most cases, you might have to do this manually. Just make sure that all of the discrepancies that need to be removed is covered. So let's have a look at this. This needs to be covered as well. Just make sure you paint over that. There you are. Simply right here as well. There you go. Sometimes some parts of the fence will not be straight. In those times, you might have to consider creating a two point straight line. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So let's say the fence is a little bent, something like this. And then we create a straight line from here by clicking once, holding the shift key, clicking once again here. See. This area is left out here in the middle. Here's what you do. Once you have clicked here, hold the shift key and click in the middle once. And then keep holding the shift key and click one more time. See, there's still an area left. In that case, you can also do three points. Once you have dabbed in the beginning, hold the shift key, click, click, and click. Throughout this process, the shift key was held all the time. You get the idea. Now that we are finished with one side of diagonals, let's start with the other side. Simple. So let's start from one side. Let's start from this area. Just make sure everything is covered. Now that the frame is painted over, we can easily move on to the next step, which is my favorite step. So step number two is simply content aware fill. So make sure that the background layer is selected and then you can turn off the fence. 
all right now hold the control or command click on the thumbnail of the fence mask layer see all of the fence areas are now selected now we're going to be using the latest dedicated content aware fill feature available in the later versions of photoshop if you're using an older version of photoshop you would have to go to edit fill and then choose content aware from right here otherwise i would highly recommend going to edit and then content aware fill directly this is available in cc 2019 and above i'm using 2020 now i'm gonna leave it at default values have a look the fence is already gone if you want to know details about how all of this works you can check the videos linked up in the description for this image we're gonna leave color adaptation to default we don't want any rotation sampling no scaling no mirroring the one thing that we need to keep in mind here is output 2 make sure it's not the current layer we want it to be non-destructive so make sure it is new layer so everything that has been replaced will be on a brand new layer once you're happy with the results just hit ok have a look press ctrl or command d so in this layer if we turn off everything just the replaced areas are there so i'm going to turn on the background and i want you to have a look at this isn't that so accurate moving on to step number three which is simply making minor adjustments so let's zoom in and examine the result of course there might be areas which are not well done have a look at this it looks good when zoomed out but when you zoom in it just doesn't look right so we need to adjust it carefully so let's go ahead and create a brand new layer and we can adjust it in a lot of ways so we can use the regular healing brush tool the spot healing brush tool first of all let's try the spot healing brush tool and try painting over the areas which look a little awkward so i'm gonna try painting right there see it just fixes those hard edges Okay, you can make the brush a little softer and then paint. Now, the most important thing is recovering the eyes. This eye right here is fine. But what about this one? We need to use the clone stamp tool to fix this. Also, even when you're using the spot healing brush tool, make sure sample all layers is checked so that it samples from the layers which are beneath it. So let's go ahead and choose the clone stamp tool right there. And then we can take a sample of the edge of the eye from here. All right, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and we need to rotate it. So to rotate it, hold the Alt key, the Shift key and the right and left arrow bracket keys to rotate this. How simple is that? Once you have rotated it, just paint. You can also go to Window and then choose the Clone Source and rotate it from right here as well. It will rotate that too. In this case, I'm going to go back to the regular healing brush tool hold the alt key or the option key click to take a sample and then fill up certain areas seems like it's being very difficult for me to kind of get the eye correctly so why don't we try to make a mirror image and paste it does it make sense no here's what i suggest let's create a brand new layer all right and then with the help of the clone stamp tool we will just sample the eye all right and just paint another eye just right here okay this is on a brand new layer now control or command t to select it and then right click on it and choose flip vertical all right and now we're gonna adjust it and place it right there you see what we are doing now click on the mask button take the brush keep in mind black hides so we will take the soft round brush and paint with black to merge it. Now we can go back to the layer to move it and to adjust it to its perfect position. You can decrease the opacity to, to make sure that it's in the right area. Control or command T. Hold the Alt key and click on an area to make it an anchor point and you can rotate it accordingly to see what fits the best. This in my opinion fits the best. We're going to go back to the mask, take the brush and paint with black and white to kind of adjust it this my friend is the closest i could get you can adjust it even more if you wish to all right now the eye looks nice of course we can 
use some cloning in here so let's go ahead and merge all of this so let's select layer one and layer two make sure both of them are selected you can hold the control or command select the other layer and then press control or command e now they are merged now we can go back to the clone stamp tool and just take a sample and just paint over this area and the healing brush tool the regular healing brush tool let's try the spot healing brush tool just fixing little areas here and there and it looks okay all we have to do now is to simply zoom in and inspect the image for discrepancies look at the top it looks all right and most of the areas we will blur later so don't worry about that look at this so simply paint over that no problem at all you can make the brush a little harder there you go some places for lift okay most of the areas are taken care of you can take all the time in the world to inspect the image very carefully look at this once you're done you can add additional effects like selective focus to hide the discrepancies even more let me show what i would do with this image first of all let's create a stamp visible layer at the top you can go ahead and delete the fence mask if you want but i'm just gonna leave it there now let's create a stamp visible layer by first of all creating a blank layer at the top this is always a good practice and let's name this selective focus all right and then press ctrl alt shift and e on a mac that would be command option shift and e all right now before applying any filter what do we do we convert that into a smart object so with the selective focus layer selected let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters hit ok now let's go to filter blur gallery and you can choose whatever you like i'm just going to choose tilt blur so let's rotate it and the areas in between the areas in the middle are focused areas in the middle have zero blur all right if i just go ahead and increase the blur to let's say 158 right here in this border blur is zero and gradually to the dotted border it increases to 158 and whatever is beyond this dotted border is 158 similarly on this side 0 158 and whatever is beyond this is is 158 so we will make sure that his eyes are in focus and slowly and gradually things are getting out of focus even right here we will make sure that happens okay we don't want a 158 blur something like that would do the job we always want the eyes to be in focus in addition to that you can also add field blur you can check field blur right here and select field blur and in here you can create different points so i'm going to create a point on his eye and decrease the blur to zero point right here decrease the blur to zero point right here decrease the blur to zero and maybe a point right here and increase the blur just a little bit a point right here at the top increase the blur just a little bit see what we are doing right here point right here increase the blur just a little bit we are keeping the face in focus hit ok once you're satisfied keep in mind you can always change all of these values why because this is a smart object all you got to do is double click on blur gallery and everything will open again hit ok you can also go ahead and add some sharpness to the eyes and the entire face by creating one more stamp visible layer at the top just press ctrl alt shift and e desaturate it by pressing ctrl shift u or command shift u on a mac and then go to filter convert for smart filters then go to filter other and then high pass zoom in decrease the radius slowly and gradually increase it just when you begin to see the halos stop so for this i'm gonna go with let's say five you can always again change all of this and then change the blend mode from normal to overlay see the sharpness right here here's the before here's the after i hope you can see it here's the before here's the after now we only want the sharpness on the face so what do we do hold the alt key or the option key and then click on the mask this creates a negative mask first of all let's name this sharpen now select the mask take the brush take a soft round brush and simply paint on the areas that you want to sharpen with white there you are it's done let's have a look at the before and after so here is the before with fence and 
without fence. So that's how to simply remove fence in Photoshop. Now keep in mind, we said simple, not easy. Sometimes when fences are completely aligned, perfectly symmetrical, maybe then you can use patterns, but for the most part, you have to do it one by one. I hope this video helped you. I will see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.